Okay, folks, uh, I got a video request out there on uh, how I go about fixing broken circuit boards. So, um, we're actually going to take a corner of this board and we're going to snap it. And then we're going to fix each and every single trace that's there. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So, if you've got a radio, such as this chicken band motherboard uh, and you got a broken corner which apparently you have a CB radio that has the corner of the board snapped well I'm going to snap a corner out of this board probably this one and then we're going to then I'm going to show you how I go ahead and fix these boards so if anybody it uh, has already fixed boards knows how to do it and I guess you don't need to watch the video but uh, for anybody that has never fixed a circuit board before literally fixed a circuit board then you might want to stay tuned again this is my way of fixing a circuit board NASA may not approve NASA may not approve but this is how Arena 63 fixes circuit boards stay tuned so the first thing we need, obviously, first thing we need is a broken circuit board. There we go. We have a broken circuit board. Oh wow, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix all these joints. <laughs> There's a few there, there's no doubt. So, let's fix the circuit board, shall we? Alright, so we have a broken circuit board, as you can see. We have a pile of traces here. More than I care to count. Suffice it to say, there's a few. So the first thing we're going to do to fix this circuit board on every one of these traces we're going to remove the black black the green enamel everything green we're going to remove along the circuit on, on each circuit and we're going to move we're going to remove roughly eh, a half inch thereabouts of uh, each side of the each joint and then we're going to tin each one of these individual traces and then I'm going to show you what I do to fix them. So let's start removing some enamel, shall hey we? Guys, uh, pardon me if I go out a shot here and scene a little bit, but uh, trying to do this with the uh, camera on my side. So of course, when I move my this board to the right, you see it go to the left, and when I go to the left, you see it go to the right. And of course, my big old knob fingers get in the way, but. Uh, Anyways, let's uh, let's remove some uh, enamelation from the board. Come on, get the board in there. There we go. Anyway, so basically, trying to keep my fingers out of the out of the way here. So we're going to start up here. And we're going to remove copper or the enamel. Just like you did. Remove all the enamel from all the traces. I was probably not the way NASA would do it, but hey, good thing I don't work for NASA. Should be left with something like that. 
on one side. Then we're going to do the same thing on the broken side of the board. Remove the enamel. Try to keep the board in the frame here. Kind of hard to do it, as I explained, but we'll try our best. Then we'll remove the enamel on this side. All the way down to the brake. And back like that. There you go. And clean it off. You should. So you should have your traces like that. See? So then what we do, we clean up more traces. <laughs> so we've got a trace broke right here. So he wants to clean that one up. Remove the enamel. Dee -dee -dee. I might speed this up and decide it. I'm all fingers boys, I'm sorry. We've got another broken trace right here next to it. Remove the enamel on that one. So these two are done. So now we have a broken trace right here. So we'll clean off the enamel here as well. Some of these are traces are small. And you really should use a smaller flathead screwdriver to clean off the to remove the enamel. So it should be something like that. The trace next to it is damaged. So we'll clean that. We'll remove that one. All right. Big ground contact here that's uh, also damaged. So we'll try to remove some enamel here. Well, this is where you probably see a break. Especially if somebody put a screw in there too tight. In this case, you're not going to do much with it. There's already solder, solder here. So, anyway, we'll just do whatever with that. Main thing is right now you have your traces all nice and coppery looking. So next thing you want to do is take your trusty soldering iron. So then we want to one second. Now what we want to do is tin all that copper. And you want a fine solder for this. Clean your tip, and then you tin each one of these each one of these traces. So we'll do this one first. Tin it all up. Tin all your copper. Don't. Uh, don't cause any solder bridges. This is going to be kind of, it's the hardest part of doing this is not to cause solder bridges. Wish there were as many traces side by side like this. There's other ways you can do it and just use jumper wire from 
one spot to another. That can work as well. Keep your keep your uh, tips clean as much as possible. And again, avoid short note your uh, traces. Solder loves copper, as you know, and it wouldn't take much to, to bridge them. Do it slowly, take your time with it. I'm going a little bit fast as I'm kind of used to this kind of stuff. But uh, you get the idea. There we have it. Do it. And the worst thing about trees is so close together, it's going to be really, really, really difficult here to solder this. This is really going to be hard. So, almost what you want to do, especially in this kind of spot here, the hole for your screw. You want to build some solder up on that. Just take your board and push it together so it's lined up as best as you can put it. And then put some solder on. I don't know where the screw hole was. That'll help hold the board together. Like that. And there you go. Gives a little bit of stiffness to the board, see? a lot but a little bit the so next thing we got to do we got to get some wire to uh, to bridge each one of these traces that's gonna be fun <laughs> all right so right now we've got a piece of wire and as you can see the wire by the time you strip it let's just strip it Strip it and twist it. So you've got this piece of wire. As you can see, maybe, that wire is almost a bit too thick. So, take the same piece of wire and you strip it. Now we're going to take that same piece of wire and now we're going to break each individual, we're going to break the wire down into its individual strands. Individual strands of wire. Individual strands. Break the wire down into individual strands. Like I say, it's probably not NASA approved, but hey. Again, good thing I don't work for NASA. Alright, now we're down to individual strands of wire. See how much smaller that is. So now. Straighten out each one of these wires, as straight as you can. Straight like a tree, straight like a rake. And then each one of these strands, we're then going to tin them. So there you go. As straight as you can make them. So I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Alright, so we got the wire. And you can see it, which don't look like it can. Let's go out a little bit. There we go. So now we're going to tin 
each one of these little strands. Tin each one of these. Tin them, tin them, tin, 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 tin. Make sure they're tin good. End to end. Because basically what's going to happen is that these individual strands are now going to become your new trace. The wire is what's going to bridge the broken traces. Like that. If you keep the solder up straight when you do this, again, keep tinning your wire as you're going, and keep your tip clean. There we go. This one next. As if you just stand up your solder your solder like that. And end end. Solder, 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 solder. Not repeat anymore. Let me go this one here. Needs to be done. Sometimes your trace is going to be small, sometimes they can be big, <laughs> all the bends. Alright, so now, you have individual stranded pieces of wire, and they're tinned. So each one of these pieces now will become your new trace for your board. So, let's put the board, the board, back on the table. And see if I can't zoom this camera back into that again. Right. So stand by. So now, <laughs> fun part begins. And we have to put each strand of wire on each one of them traces. Holy Moses. All I can say, boys, is uh, take a deep breath <laughs> and uh, take your time. <laughs> this is going to be painfully painful to do. So, just straight, stare at one end and just stutter it down. Alright, now take your flat hitch driver again and then bend your wire to the same shape as the original trace as best you can. Here's your goal. Side it down ever so slowly. Again, this wire is going to become your new trace. A jump here. Now we're going on to the from one broken board, one part of the broken board now to the next. So be very careful here. Straighten up the wire as you're going. Keep the wire down to the board as much as you can. There you go. Now take your Fine, fine, fine wire snippers. In my case, these critters. And then snip off your wire. And there we go. One trace completed. So now you take another piece of your tin wire. 
And then we do the other trace. Again, keep your tip clean on your solder iron. So just take it in. Just get it going. So you want to just get it going. Solder it in there. Take your flat screwdriver. Bend the wire to the shape of the original trace. Just like that. I'll tell you one thing, this is something you don't see on YouTube very much, if at all, doing what I'm doing here now. So we're up to the brick again. So let's continue on with the solder. Careful. Solder very slowly. Take your time. Trace is already damaged, so don't worry about burning it up. <laughs> it's already damaged. So then snip it again. So there's two traces done. This can be nerve wracking. One wrong mistake. I'm going to end up having to take all that wire off and do it again. There's something you, like, you want to do. Doing this once is bad enough. Just take your time. Oop. Trying to get it to start. Sometimes it is a nuisance. <laughs> you can tell. <sighs> Come on, work. Work with me here. I'm going to tint some more water. Tint with some more solder and into that water. She wouldn't be tint enough. Alright. Do it again. Reverse you don't succeed. Try it again. I can do it. You don't want to cooperate, boys. There we go. We got her. Alright, flat hit screwdriver. Turn the turn it turn the wire the direction you need it. Again, you don't want these wires touching each other. Our whole repair job is going out to the ramp the window. See, there's a little bit of a thing going on there. There we go. Okay. We're up to the break. Ready? 
it in. Remember, just do this time. There's no rush. No rush, folks, no rush. So now we're going to cross the brake again. So just push it down. Are we having fun yet? I'm going to leave one trace on solder just to show you the precision there. So again. Oh shit. I'll do that. There we go. Taken, tin that wire more. There we go. There we go. Now take the flatish whatever again. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid, boys, to bend that wire. It's got to be bent. Like that. Uh. <laughs> See that? Put the heat on there for too long, and you just let go. Do it again. Fine. Go to the show how hard it is to actually do this. It's not easy. Taking a deep breath. <laughs> All right, let's take a close-up view of the fixed or repair traces. Okay, so that's all the leftover wire. <laughs> left, left over, as you can see, strands of wire from a regular piece of wire. So here is the repaired traces. Repair traces. But we're not going to do it yet because next thing we got to do is continuity on these to make sure they're not. Uh, we don't got no short circuits anywhere here. You can see the original break right there. This trace, this trace here ain't ain't done, but it gives you an idea. See that? That's individual wire strands. And dead nuts. <laughs> so, let's do a continuity on these and uh, see if any of these are bad right, or not. Now we're going to test each individual one of these. So I'm going to track them from the PLL. One at a trace to where it ends, which is down here. So we know we're good there. Then we'll check our next trace, which ends right here. Then our next trace, which ends right here. Then our next trace, which ends right here. 
And then this trace here, which ends right there. And then you got the trace here that's not joined. And as you can see, it's open. So now we're going to check each individual one of these. So we know our solder joints from from end from one end of the trace to the other is good. So now we're going to check put our probe there. So we're going to touch a spot. Then we're going to touch it to the next trace. We're good there. We're good there. And there and there. So we know that trace is good. It's not short it. So then we move over to the second trace. And then we go across again. And we know we're good there. Move to the next trace. We know we're good. Then the next trace. You know we're good. So right now we have no shorts on the repair here at all. No short circuits. So we're good. We are golden. So folks, that is how you uh, repair a broken trace on your on your radio. Now, in the case of this type of a break, we've got a few breaks going on here. We got the main. We actually, got a chunk missing out of the board here. So I'm going to show you how I fix this one. So now you got fix. You got traces fixed. Here. You don't want to put too much pressure here. So. Keep it there and just lightly remove the enamel. You gotta get it off. You got a little bit of force, but not enough to break your traces you just fixed. So she's flat as forever, just like that. Now we're gonna go across this side. Freezer and boys, take it off. It's got to come off. Like that. Now you take your solder and you know you tin your trace that you just cleaned the enamel off of. Tin it. Don't be afraid of it. Give it, give it a generous piece, bit of solder. Let it soak in there. Don't be afraid of it. You want to be afraid of the solder, boys. There you go. So then you're like that. So now, I'll let you see what I got done so far. So as you can see, I'll pin it out here to show you. Point it out. So remove the enamel on both sides of that break. And then we tin with solder. So now what I'm going to do is add a piece of wire in here. Actually, we're going to use the same piece of wire. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to strip off some of this wire now. So, I'll put this set camera here. You see everything. So everybody likes to see everything. Strip off the old, strip off the insulation, as you can see. Take all them strands and twist them together. So it becomes one. Like that. Now what you want to do, take that wire, now you want to tin it. Tin it, tin it, tin it, tin it, tin it. Don't be afraid of it. Give it solder. Alright. So as you can see, She is now tin. So let's see how close I can get you here to the, to me to this to this job now. So right. Stand by. So what we're going to do? We're going to take this piece of wire and put across that joint. We're going to tin it. We're going to solder this wire across that trace, right straight across that break. Like that, push it down, and make sure she takes to it. There you go. And then you 
just snip off that there. And the trace there you go. go. Trace repaired. Multiple traces repaired. And yep, that's how it's done, folks. Or at least that's how Rena 63 does it. Now, uh, if you want to strengthen the board even more after you do your soldering, I suppose if you really want it to, you could just put some epoxy and epoxy the board after it's all done. Epoxy the top of it, and then you can uh, epoxy the bottom to strengthen it if you really want to strengthen it up. But you can tell already, just you know, just by uh, fixing it. It breaks here. The whole board is actually flexing there now. Which means there's some good soldering going on there. So by the time you've redone all the soldering along here, and you epoxy the top of the board, top epoxy the bottom of the board, your board is good as new again. And again, when you put your screw in for your, <laughs> you don't want to go too too tight. <laughs> you could snap the board again, and your back screw won't. But anyways. Hope that video is of use to people out there. This, uh, again, may not be how NASA does it, but this is how Rain 63 does it. There you go. This is Rain 63.